Welcome to week 17 of Algebra 1 with Mrs. Weibark. This week we will continue our discussion of polynomials. In part 3 we will be talking about multiplying monomials by polynomials and multiplying binomials. This week's notes will take place in two formats. The first page of notes will go directly into your interactive math notebook. You should go to your first blank page and record the first two examples on the left side of your notebook. When multiplying monomials by a polynomial, we use the distributive property. We've been using this property all year when solving equations, so really this is nothing new. But we have to make sure that we multiply the monomial by every term in the polynomial. So in example one, we have the monomial 2x multiplied by a binomial 5x plus 8. So we're going to make sure that we multiply 2x by each term. So we will do 2x times 5x plus 2x times 8. I'm adding these terms because in, within this binomial, it is an addition operation. When I simplify, 2x times 5x is 10x squared. I bring down my addition symbol, and 2x times 8 is 16x. This is as simplified as this example gets, as these are not like terms, and therefore they cannot be added. In example 2, we are multiplying the monomial 3x by a trinomial, 4x squared plus 2x minus 6. So I'm going to multiply 3x by each one of these three terms. So I have 3x times 4x squared, I bring down my addition sign, 3x times 2x, and then I bring down the subtraction sign and multiply 3x times 6. When I simplify, I will have 3 times 4 gives me 12x cubed, plus 3 times 2 gives me 6x squared, minus 3 times 6 is 18x. Once again, this is as simplified as it gets. Your first page of notes should look like this when completed. If needed, please take a moment and catch up in your interactive math notebook. In our second part of this discussion, we are going to use the handout that was provided in class for taking notes, or you are welcome to download it from the class Moodle page. There are three methods for multiplying binomials. The best part about these three methods is that actually they're all the same. There's just different ways that you can write it. So here they are, the distributive method, FOIL, and the box method. Perhaps you've already used these in middle school before. Please take a moment to jot these on the front page of your handout. First, we're going to take a look at the distributive property. In example three, we're going to multiply 2x plus 3 times 5x plus 8. We are using the distributive property, so we have to multiply every term in this first polynomial by every term in the second polynomial. In doing so, we get 2x times 5x plus 8 plus 3 times 5x plus 8. And when we simplify, 2x times 5x is 10x squared, 2x times 8 is 16x plus 3 times 5x is 15x, and 3 times 8 is 24. You might notice that I actually have some like terms this time. So when you finish multiplying, you should always combine like terms when possible. 16x and 15x will combine to give me 31x. So my final simplified answer is 10x squared plus 31x plus 24. Next, we're going to take a look at the FOIL method. The FOIL method really isn't new. It's just an acronym that we use to remember which terms to multiply when we use the distributive property. The limitation of the FOIL method is it can only be used when we are multiplying two binomials. When using the FOIL example, as we will in example number four, 
we are going to multiply the two binomials y plus 3 times y plus 7. The F in FOIL stands for first, and it means that I will multiply the first term of each binomial. Y times Y is Y squared. The O in FOIL stands for outer. This means that we are going to multiply the two outer terms, Y and 7. This gives us 7Y. Next is I. I stands for inner. This is the two innermost terms of the expression. 3 and Y gives us 3Y. And lastly, L stands for last. This would be the last term of each binomial. So I have 3 and 7. When multiplied, they give me 21. Now that I have multiplied all the terms in the first binomial by all the terms in the second binomial, I can combine like terms, which will give me y squared plus 10y plus 21. Remember, FOIL simply reminds you to multiply the first terms, outer terms, inner terms, and last terms. The second part of your notes should look like this when completed. If needed, please take a moment to catch up. The last method that we're going to take a look at is the box method. And the great thing about the box method is this works for every combination of polynomials. It doesn't matter how many terms are in each polynomial, you can always rely on the box method to keep you organized and get an accurate answer. In example 5, we are going to multiply 3x minus 5 and 5x plus 2. There are a few steps to setting up the box method, but it's well worth the time. First you draw a box, you then write one polynomial across the top of the box, and the other polynomial down the side of the box. And it doesn't matter which one you put where. So in this example, I took my first binomial, 3x minus 5, and wrote it across the top. Notice that I kept the negative sign with the 5. That's to remind me that it's really adding negative 5. And then my second binomial, 5x plus 2, is written down the side. Once the box method is set up, it moves quite quickly. So in using the box method, what we're going to do is first multiply 5x times 3x to get 15x squared. We're then going to multiply 2 times 3x to get 6x. Next is 5x times negative 5 to get negative 25x. And lastly, 2 times negative 5 to get negative 10. Once I have all four terms, then I have to remember to combine like terms. My like terms in this case are 6x and negative 25x. So my final resulting expression is 15x squared minus 19x minus 10. I actually could have done this using any of the three methods. If I had decided to distribute first, I would do 3x times 5x. That's the same as the first terms. And it's also the first two items I would multiply in my box. Next in distributing would be 3x times 2, that's the outer terms, and I would get 6x. I would then do the inner terms, that's the second term here distributed to the next polynomial, and I would get negative 25x. And lastly would be negative 5 times 2 for negative 10. So again, when I combine like terms, I get the very same answer regardless of which three methods I use. This was example five, so there's not a spot for this in your notes because we've already done this example. So as you can see, you have three techniques and you should pick the one you like the best. We have one last example today. We are going to multiply the binomial 7p minus two times 3p minus four. I'm going to illustrate all three methods. 
If I use a box, I might take the first polynomial and put it across the top, 7p minus 2, and the second polynomial, 3p minus 4, down the side. So remember, if I distribute, I'm going to take this first term, 7p, and multiply by both terms in the second binomial. That's the same as my first term in FOIL, so I get 21p squared. Next is going to be 7p times negative 4. That's my outer term, negative 28p. The inner terms, negative 2 times 3p, gives me negative 6p. And last term, of course, will be two, negative 2 times negative 4 for a positive 8 over here. So I get the same four terms regardless of which method I choose. Always remember to combine like terms when possible. So I have negative 28p and negative 6p, which will combine so that my final answer is 21p squared minus 34p plus 8. So of the three techniques, pick whichever one you think you're most likely to do correctly. And this is what the last part of your completed notes should look like. So if needed, take a moment and finish them up. Thank you for watching this Wybark production.